the two songs, the two, two first songs in that middle section fit into the sermon so perfectly. And I, you know, it's the Holy Spirit's work, I'm, con I'm, uh, I'm convinced, but uh, we did not communicate about this. <laughs> Okay, so let me, oop, let me get my clicker. How am I? What am I? Who am I? Why am I? Those questions begin to be answered in uh, these words from uh, a, a praise song of probably several decades ago, in Come, Let Us Worship and Bow Down. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand, just the sheep of his hand. God is our maker. So today's message is entitled, Man, God's wonder. And the purpose is to take a, a close look at just how wonderfully God uh, has made us the pinnacle of his creation. Now we just, we just heard this from, uh, from Lillian. You formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, the version that uh, Lillian read from said, awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God, how vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. So let's take a look at God's process to create humans. And this is after he created Adam and Eve as the initial humans. Parents participate with God in our creation. And ideally, our conception is the result of husband and wife coming together in a one flesh love. Now, the mother always uh, contributes an X chromosome in her ova as one half of the 23 chromosome pairs in humans. And the father contributes either an X or a Y chromosome in his sperm that fertilizes the ova, and that sperm determines the sex of the child. And the single cell that is formed by the union of the ova and the sperm, uh, it, can, it contains the characteristics of both parents. That cell is called a zygote. And it's the beginning of human life. It splits and becomes two. The two become four. The four become eight. And so on until... As adult humans, we have about 37 trillion cells. I think they actually say 37.2 trillion cells, but we won't quibble over that little bit. That's 37 with 12 zeros behind it, by the way. Those cells are of about 200 different kinds of cells. Now think about it. We have clear cells in the cornea of our eyes. We have blood cells. We have skin cells. We have bone cells. 200 different kinds of cells in our bodies. That's, that's a lot of different cells. And that's a lot of total cells. Again, you formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. So all of these cells, all of these different cells uh, uh, form different um, structures in our body, different parts of our body. And they're knit together in our bodies. We're designed and created by the infinitely intelligent, boundlessly wise God. That's who our creator is. He forms all those inward parts. We have 
hearts, we have lungs, we have circulatory systems, we have nervous systems, uh, intestines, brains, heads, mouths, eyes, ears, noses, hair, arms and hands, bodies, genitalia, legs, knees, feet. And then after nine months of development, there's birth. I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. So God's process to create humans, it goes through uh, the process of development in, in the mother's womb and birth, and then growth 15 to 30 times the size of a baby. 25 times change in size from an eight pound baby to a 200 pound man. 25 times, that's a lot. And then there's, there's growth in knowledge and experience too. And even in the process of birth, there are so many chemical changes. There are so many things that happen to our bodies. Marie gave a talk about that, uh, what, eight years ago? I think it's still on our website. I, I think so. <laughs> uh, but you know what God has done in the human body with all of the interactions that have to happen and they have to be there in the right time, uh, it's incredibly complex, incredibly wonderful. What are some of the major body systems? See if we can name any of them. Brain, okay. Cardiac, Cardiac okay. Digestive tract. Digestive tract? Ah, this is a nurse. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah. Okay, well, uh, did. The mucoskeletal. The mucoskeletal? The skeletal, yes. But, Muscular uh, skeletal, okay, yes, yes. Well, here, here's the list. Uh, skeletal, muscular, nervous, endocrine. The endocrine system is the system uh, where all of the hormones uh, that are involved in our body are, uh, are made. There are about 50 hormones for internal communication within our body. Some of those are insulin for diabetics, we know that well, iodine, Estrogen, testosterone, epinephrine, serotonin, that's the happy one, the comfort one, the peace one, <laughs> and melatonin, that's the go to sleep on the airplane one. <laughs> Cardiovascular, lymphatic, respiratory, digestive, excretory, urinary, reproductive, and integumentary. Now that one maybe isn't one that everybody's familiar with. I had to look it up, <laughs> I'll be honest. And it has to do with the outer layers of skin, of the body rather, uh, our skin, our hair, uh, our nails, and our glands. And it, it, it deals with things like regulating our body temperature. You know, we perspire if we get warm, so that cools us down, that sort of thing, yeah. And, you know, if we, if we look at the, uh, the, the combination of the respiratory and the cardiovascular system, it is, it is incredibly complex. It is incredibly wonderful. Uh, we breathe automatically. We don't have to think about it. But we're so, we're so accustomed to who, what we are and who everybody else is that we know, we just don't think about these things. We take them for granted. There is nothing easy about this. This is incredibly complex design. Our, our, our brain cell, uh, senses uh, when we need oxygen. It senses uh, if we have too much carbon dioxide. So it, it sends signals through the, uh, what nerve is it? Phrenic nerve, I think. I thought I had it written here, but I'm not seeing it. Um, uh, to our diaphragm, and our diaphragm speeds up or slows down, and we breathe. We get more oxygen if we need more oxygen because the diaphragm speeds up. And, uh, you know, it, 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 and that's, that's just getting the oxygen to, into the, the, uh, our lungs. And then it has to go through semi-permeable membrane where oxygen goes one way from, from the air in the lungs through, that, through this membrane, which is the, cell mem the blood cell membrane. 
and uh, then the oxygen is transferred to the blood cells, which then speed around our body and, and give it to our cells. The, all, of the, all the 37 trillion cells in our body. Uh, nothing simple about it. It's very, very complex. And the blood doesn't go around our body if our heart's not working. You know, I have two stents because my heart wasn't working like it should have been. It was pretty plugged up in a couple of places. And, uh, you know, Rick has been through something recently there. Uh, you know, if that's not fully functioning, we, there's a point where we don't function anymore. We die. But uh, if, if, it's, if it's not functioning fully, uh, it, will, it can bring us down, uh, make us ill. There's something called irreducible complexity. Uh, Dr. Michael Behe uh, coined that phrase. He uses the illustration of the mousetrap. The mousetrap is a small platform of wood, okay? On it is um, fastened uh, what's called a hammer. That's the thing that comes over and whacks the, the mouse. <laughs> and a spring. And uh, the hold, hold down deal that, that holds the, the hammer in place uh, as long as the catch where the uh, cheese is located for the mouse uh, is, is, um, hasn't been depressed. Once the mouse depresses that, it, it goes back and the hammer gets the mouse. Without one of those parts, that mouse trap does not work. That is irreducible complexity. It has to have all of those parts or it doesn't work. Our bodies are so much more complex. And if, if all of that complexity isn't working together the way God designed it, we don't work so well or we just die. Let's talk about our senses. What are, what are our senses? I'm sorry? Smell. Smell. Hearing. 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 Seeing. Tasting, yeah, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we we got. I think we got most of them. Uh, here's a list of them. Uh, the two that are not uh, so well known are proprioception. That's our sense of body position. We can close our eyes and touch our noses. We know where things are. It's that sense. Um, it's, it, we can walk up and down steps without looking at our feet and, placing, and, and consciously placing our feet on each step. We have a sense of where we are. In the vestibular sense, that, that's named after the, the vestibule, whatever, <laughs> in our ears, and the sense of balance comes from that. So we know where up is, we know where down is. And uh, you know, that's, both of these are pretty handy for, uh, for X Games kind of people who are flying through the sky on skateboards or snowboards or whatever they're flying through the sky on. We'll run through the senses quickly here. In our sense of touch, there are the things that are involved there are pressure, temperature, we know hot and cold, texture, smooth or, or rough, uh, pain or comfort, and as part of the touch um, uh, sense. Vibration, wet and dry. You know, we, if water runs over our hand with our, when our eyes are closed, we know what's happening. <laughs> it's the sense of uh, touch. Tickle and itch, those are part of the touch sense. Sight, the, the, our, our vision, our, our ability to see is so incredible. I mean. When you think of, of the food we eat, you know, it all ends up as some sort of probably brown gray soup in, the, in our stomachs, right? Yet, we have eyes. The cornea, for example, is, is like glass. It's clear. It's clean. It has no color. It has no stuff. <laughs> well, it, does have, it is made of, of, of living uh, cells, but um, that they are clear as glass is incredible. And our eyes autofocus, you know. If I look down at this, I'm focused on it instantly. If I look back at you, Dave, you're focused. You're in focus, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And we have, we have a self-cleaning system for the eyes. Our blinking keeps our eyes clean. <laughs> our, our cameras never do that. We have, to, we have to clean the lenses. And then we, have, we don't think about it too much, hardly at all, but we have peripheral vision. And sometimes that, that, that warns us that, hey, we're going to have a collision if, if I don't change course. Uh, you know, it, the peripheral vision uh, helps keep us safe. Hearing, again, what, what an awesome, what an awesome um, sense that is. And it is especially awesome uh, in, well, I think of a Christmas concert we went to in Pasadena. Um, 160 voices, full, big pipe organ, uh, um, and a 40, 50 piece orchestra. That was the Azusa Pacific Chorale doing its Christmas concert at Lake Avenue Church in Pasadena. There is, there, I, that's still the greatest praise experience ever, jo singing Joy to the World with the organ there. I, I really have always loved that concert. The sense of smell. What are some of the categories of smell you can think of? <laughs> Bree, <laughs> that's a look of horror. <laughs> fragrances. Fragrances, yes. Flowers. But then on the other hand, we have the skunk on the skunks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's there's fragrant, there's woody, uh, resinous. Th these are the official ones I've read about in, on numerous sites. And I think they missed some. Uh, and uh, fruity, meaning non-citrus, chemical, and minty and peppermint, sweet, popcorn. They give popcorn as, as um, a category of smell. I, I don't quite get that one, but <laughs> uh, and, you know, as far as repugnant, we talked about the skunk, but then there are stink bugs and decaying flesh and you know ugly stuff. Okay. We're in taste now. Well, that is one of my favorite tastes. And there we have categories like sweet, salty, sour, bitter, uamami, which is a Japanese word, and, and that's savory. That's, that's like cheese and meat. And I, I think in New Zealand they have these, these savory pies, and they're like a steak pie, a, um, cheese pie. Very good. Savory is bigger over there than it is here. Then the proprioception, we already talked about that. That's knowing uh, where our body position is and distributed the balance. What are our seven senses for? God designed ways for us to experience and live joyfully in our environment to see his creative hand in it. But there's more! God created us in his image. God has given us minds. He's given us both the physiology and minds to speak, read, and understand language. When I say he's given us the physiology, it means our tongues, our teeth, our vocal cords, all of that allows us to form words and speak. He's given us that and the minds to, to develop languages and uh, then to have the written form of those languages and to understand them. Why is that important? We don't think without language. I've, I've, I've mentioned this in times past. We don't think without language. Helen Keller said that she knew nothing until she learned what water was. And they ran water, she was blind and deaf and dumb. They ran water on her hand, and they, they uh, wrote water on her hands. So she connected those, and that was the beginning of her understanding of language. And she said that she knew nothing until she, was, she had language. With language, we think, and we give voice to the reality about our surroundings, about God, about others and ourselves. And thinking allows us to see ourselves objectively. If we goof up, you know, we can say, boy, Murph, you really blew it that time. 
That would be on my case. <laughs> uh, we can see ourselves, we can objectivate ourselves and see and just view ourselves to see what we're, uh, what we're doing, what we're, how, how we um, measure up to God's thinking and, and being. And we can also think in abstractions. In, that's in the realm of thinking, in the realm of thought. Peace is an abstraction. Love is an abstraction. The number seven is an abstraction. You know, you can't, you, you think seven and you can't envision a chair. You can envision seven items of something, but still seven is a, an abstraction to describe that. So God has given us minds that are capable of creative and artistic expression as well. So what are some of the ways that God has given us to express ourselves creatively and artistically? I'm sorry? Music. Music, absolutely. Art and drawing. How about dance? What did you say? Speaking. Speaking, yeah. Okay. Reading poetry <laughs> would be a way. Reading scripture. Hmm? Um, playing musical instruments. Photography, videography. Sculpture, creative writing, drama, needlework. I mean, it's so, I mean, these are, this is a smattering. Design and construction of, uh, uh, in that area, work of that kind, uh, artistry of that kind, many, many different kinds. And God has given us minds to motivate us to action in and for our communities. But there's still more. There is still more. In his image, God has given us the spirit in man. It's said that the spirit in man is the deepest part of our human existence. And the Holy Spirit of God, coupled with the Spirit in man, couples us with the very nature of God. We become one. We are in, in the image of God, the Imago Dei. When our spirit is coupled with the Holy Spirit. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them? God's thinking. God thought, God's thoughts need to mold our thoughts. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. And then we, this, this one fits very well too. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. This is when our thoughts are in alignment with God's thoughts. Now, that would be the way that Imelda says it, in alignment with God's thought. <laughs> but it's a good word, and it's a good concept to have. And with God's thoughts in us, we are transformed into his image. We're transformed, motivated to live by God's thoughts. And in the image of God, we have become the adopted children of God. This is that relationship where we cry, Abba, Daddy. And our, our identity is now as a child of God. We need to latch onto that and hold that as our identity. Keep holding it. God made us for relationship with him. He created us for relationship with him. How awesome is that? We, we read over and over again uh, about how God uh, wants us to be his people and that we, uh, call, that we are, that he is our God. How awesome. In summary, as humans, we are wonderfully made by God. 
We are physical creations of God. We are made in the image of God with mind, thought, and spirit. We're made to be like God. We're made to be with God. I should have added the, that. We're made to be with God for eternity. The bottom line, as the pinnacle of God's creation, fearfully and wonderfully made by God, let's bring glory to God by being like him. Okay? Amen.